Hey YouTube, welcome to TC10, the crazy troll nation of YouTube. You know what time it is. Chapstick. The crazy just because I am sometimes the troll because I consider myself a troll when I put on face paint. A cute troll, but still a troll nonetheless. This video, this portion is going to be super quick. Um, but then I am going to add additional videos to this one. So it may end up being pretty long. Reason being, I received something in the mail today. It came very well, very well packaged. So I opened that up, it came by FedEx. It shipped and I received it in two days. It was in this bubble wrap, so I took the tape off of that. <laughs> there was the invoice slip. There was um, an eyeshadow. This one in the middle is, I don't have my reading glasses on. This is from the Camel palette. I'm not even gonna try and read it, but whatever that middle shade is. <laughs> And the item that I actually purchased came in here, very, very nicely packaged. And inside the box was this packaging, this cardboard, and then this box. Yes, this is the Natasha Denona Safari palette. The reviews were so mixed. Some people hated it. Some people loved it. It was on half off. It was for $64.50 on a Sephora site. Um, what's today? Today is June... <laughs> about a month ago it was on sale at the Sephora site and I kept thinking do I want it do I not want it I'm watching videos I'm listening to reviews and I'm like eh. and so when I decided to get it the sale was over it was gone so it wasn't even on it's not even on the website so they sold out and so I still kept going back and forth and then I said okay it was not meant for me to have it I was watching videos on the Metropolis palette since the bronze palette came out and then that renewed my interest in the safari palette so i went to the natasha denona website and they have it for half off 64 dollars 50 free shipping so this is what it looks like as you know i'm not going to do swatches because if you guys are interested in this palette you've seen it all over youtube already this is what the inside looks like very pretty and i am going away today and so I'm going to play with this palette while I'm going. And depending on the lighting, I will just do a quick, this is the face of the day, this color is here, this one's there, this one's there. And I'll also let you know um, what my thoughts are. Like, is this a dud, one of the ones that people hate, or is this the one of the ones that people love? And so that's what I'm going to do. So that's all this portion of the video is about. You will see me in what's going to seem like a second. Today I don't have on any face paint. Excuse this eye. As you can see, like there's no color here. This eye has been tearing horribly to the point now where it's even like running down here and it's running up in my crease. But anyway, this is the first look that I've done with the Safari palette today. And so I just wanted to go on and show you what it's looking like. And it's looking muted and I will tell you why. I did use the Fenty eyeshadow primer, which I use for all of my eyeshadow looks. And I took this color here, um, Aya or Aya, this one right here. And it was a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. And so I ended up putting it over my entire lid all the way up into the crease. And so I think using that as a complete base muted out the other colors. And so I will do this exact look again without, um, I guess setting the primer which I did not intend to do but because of how bright that was well not bright but how pale it was I ended up just putting it all over and plus I was using a fluffy brush and so it kind of went all over and then I used this entire bottom row to do like a monochrome type look so I used this on the inner corner and I put the shade names below and then I put this next to it here this color is this color which is more prominent and I had to keep going in with this into the crease dabbing it in and again I think it's because this was there and then I used this color on the outer corner and I used this shade here above the crease to just blend away some of this shade this color right here for me is awesome as an eraser color because I went too far over with this brown is that brown <laughs> yeah I went too far over with this brown and this shade right here it just buffed it out really well so this is like a great all-over shade for me or like a great eraser shade or to blend out crease colors 
above the crease and then I did put on eyeliner I do like the look um, and as I said I will recreate it without putting that first shade all over because I do think these colors will be a little more prominent than how they look on my lid because these are some really intense colors even though they're neutral colors I think I can get more saturation out of these and so I will do this look again without this one all over so I'll start with this above the crease and then do the same thing in a corner um, put this one here this one in the center and this one in the outer corner and I also did the same thing underneath which you can't really tell but that's what this look is and so thank you for being here thank you for enduring the trollness and I will say all of these went on fairly smooth and so using this entire bottom row and this one I've used six shadows out of this palette already they all blended really well but again it was all over top of that one shade so I don't know if that has something to do with or not and I'll get a better feel for it for it the next time I do this look without that as an all over shade underneath everything else and so if you have this palette let me know what you think of it if you've done a look like this just you know going by rows you know let me know how it turned out for you and I I'm doing it this way because this will help me to use every shade really quick if I just do them by rows just knock all the colors out see how they work see how they blend see what the saturation is and that and so you will see me again which will seem like a second but I will be back with another look thanks guys so this is my second day doing this look I did it exactly the same except which means it's not exactly the same I didn't put that Ava shade all over from my lash line up to my brow bone and I do think it helped the colors be more saturated and so I am liking it my left eye this one here this one is tearing um, and it teared horribly yesterday too and I don't know why so I just wanted to show you guys the look because I was hoping it would come out more saturated than yesterday and it did and I like the look so this is what we got and I like it I will say so far um, all the shades I did use six in total so far are powdery so I will say that and so make sure you you know have a paper towel down or a cloth or something unless you're like standing over the sink while you're doing makeup excuse me if the camera is shaking i'm holding it in my hands and you will see me and what will seem like a second hey youtube this is another look using the natasha the nona safari palette and today i used the entire middle row and I will put somewhere on the screen what shade I put where um, this shade here Shea or Shea very patchy <laughs> I know I said yesterday but this is what the look is looking like um, but that shade in particular was just hard to blend I know yesterday I said that um, her shadows and this palette are very powdery I realized today that they seem extremely powdery and there's a lot of kick up in the pan when I use a fluffy brush if I use a dense brush or like an angled shadow brush then there's not that much kick up in the pan and I am not having any, I am not having any fallout with these shades because I do tap the brush before I apply the shadow um, I am thinking that these colors are pretty muted I used a Fenty eyeshadow primer which is a sticky primer <laughs> which is why I like it but then as I thought about it when you think of safari colors they're not really bold bright colors and so as I'm using these and particularly this look today thinking they were muted I said well if it is a safari theme then yeah, it does go along with the theme you know the different tones of brown that's in this second row and even like this shade here which is primarily above my crease which you can see on my skin tone I can see these shades especially like these here they're not suitable for my skin tone except maybe as a brow bone highlight um, this shade here is a good cover-up shade for me I apply too much of Shea 
um, on one eye. My eyeshadow looks on both eyes are never the same. And so I used it to tone it down because I had more on one side than the other side. And I was trying to build it up to even it out. And it was not building up. So that shade in particular for me just really was not um, working for me. Which was disappointing because it is um, a warm tone brown. And I do like warm tones on me uh, more so than cool tones. And so I did have problems with that shade. All the other ones in that row, they showed up well. They blended well. And I also think I'm a little bit spoiled because one of my first palettes from her brand was the Biba palette, which I absolutely love. And I love her. I'm sorry for the lighting. I'm sitting in front of... Let me mm, pull the blind up, but then you saw what happened. Um... <laughs> I love her cream to matte formula or cream to powder formula, whatever that is. They go on smooth as if it's a cream, but then when as you blend them, it's like a powder. I love it. And so using this one, which is pre-cream matte formula, I think I'm a bit spoiled by the Biba palette. But for what it is, and getting it on sale for half off, which was $64.50, I would say it's worth it. However, if I had paid full price for it, and after being spoiled by the Biba palette and the creamy matte formula, I would be disappointed in this one. However, I do think it's a good palette. Tomorrow when I play in it, which will seem like a few seconds to you guys, I'm going to use this entire top row. And that is what we will do. And so at that point, I'll be able to say I've used every shade in this palette. I do think this is something I will grab for when I want something that looks colorful, but like a muted colorful not something really bold and bright that's unwearable um the two looks you saw already which were identical except for one technique that i switched up it was very wearable very muted but i did like how it looked and so i i do think i got one of the good palettes because some people love them some people hated it um but they are very muted and if you're wanting bold colors then I can see people being disappointed in the saturation of these colors. I do think it is very pretty. I do like this look, and it is undone. I did not put on any eyeliner today. I think my eyes were tearing so bad the last two times I did this palette because I put the Sephora Glide Liner, which is waterproof, on my waterline before I did my eye look. And I knew from like 10 years ago, I do have a problem with waterproof eyeliners in general because it dries out my eyes and so I did not put on any liner today and my eyes are not tearing I'm not having any problems at all and that is about it for this portion of this video and so and I know it's looking kind of janky because that one shade Shea or Shea just wasn't blending well for me that's the one in my outer corner and so that's why this looks patchy right here so that one absolutely is patchy the rest of them no problem with that all I did have to keep going back in, in the pan to build it up. And if you have time to do that, then, you know, you'll be fine with it. If you don't like to keep dipping, then you'll become impatient with it. And also, as I mentioned, the shadows went on better and also with less kick up in the pan using a more dense brush or using an angled shader brush versus a fluffy shader brush. And so those are... Um, different brushes I've tried just to get a better payoff in color. So I'm going to end this here because when I compile all of these videos into one video it's going to seem kind of long. And excuse my trollness, um, I've been out in the sun and I have sunburn on my nose and it's itchy and I'm developing a, um, a heat rash even like on my arms and then on my face it's starting to break out from the sun and yes I was using SPF. Um, while I was out, but my skin is kind of going through it right now. And I'm getting, like I said, a heat rash. So I have like more bumps than usual on my face. And so I'm not doing any foundation for these videos. And plus it's just to try out the, the shadows. And so I do apologize that you're not getting a complete look. And that it is looking a little janky. But this is just, you know, my trial with this palette and to share my thoughts. And so thank you for watching. And you will see me very soon. <laughs>Hey guys, this is the final row, the top row. I use this color as a brow bone highlight and my inner corner. This shade above the crease 
this shade directly in the crease and slightly above the crease this shade on the this area here <laughs> the second half of my lid and this color here on the first half of my lid this blue shade is here this green shade is here and so that's what I did today I like to look but I would take next time when I do this I will take this shade further up in the crease because like this side to me looks good but this side there's too much of that pale color my eyes my eyeshadows are never symmetrical it's whatever but and I did put on eyeliner on my upper lash line I'm still not using any eyeliner on my inner rims and I think that's something I'm going to have to just not do at all indefinitely um, I did say yesterday which seems like a few seconds ago for you guys that I knew about 10 years ago that my eyes just did not tolerate waterproof eyeliner but every now and then I try a different brand and thinking okay maybe I can do it because I really like the look of liner on my inner rims and the only thing that has worked for me is the buxom inside eyeliner and they don't make it anymore and the one I have is hella old and <laughs> I know I need to throw it away and so periodically I try a new one and it 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 just it doesn't work it dries out my skin too much and then my eyes tear horribly and then they itch for like two days and so I haven't used it in two days and my eyes are still like a little sensitive and also because I have um I'm not sunburned but I have a heat rash and so I think my lids are also sensitive because of that I have heat rash on both of my arms the top of both of my feet are are sunburnt and just to let you guys see <laughs> yeah and so i'm in the house today because my skin is just really just itchy and my arms from the rash i just have like bumps everywhere and even my face i have a heat rash and so you know no foundation again today and i have like extra bumps on my face and sunburn on my nose <laughs> so i'm going through it but um i'm still happy I have this palette. Um, what I said yesterday about the palette still stands for today, having used the last five shadows. I did not have the only, I was going to say I didn't have any issues with this palette, but the only color I had an issue with up top, this, which one was it? This shade here. What's the name of that one? Rhino. Rhino went on patchy when I was putting that in my crease. It went on. This eye, it did not go on patchy this side it did and so maybe i had more of that first shade underneath on this side and that's what made it um apply smoothly but this side was patchy definitely this shade here shea shea it's probably pronounced shea because it's spelled like the shea and shea butter and yesterday i kept saying shea or shea but it's actually just shea i'm a little off that's the crazy in tctn this shade is definitely patchy regardless i did use um for the the actual lid colors today I did use a flat shader brush and I did get a better color payoff than when I was using the previous colors with the fluffy shader brush and so for more intense payout for more saturation I do suggest a flat shader brush versus a fluffy shader brush this blue surprised me because I, because the other shadows were so muted the other two rows the looks I did I did not expect this blue to actually be that blue and so when I first pressed it on I was like oh and then I said it's probably the brush I used and so the other looks I did I will go back and redo them using different brushes to see if it does increase the saturation look of the shades I do still like the palette I'm glad I have it um I do still miss the creamy matte formula but I mean, I could work with this, it's good. And I do like this look, it's a darker look and I do like darker shades on me, on my skin tone. And I do miss though, um, just having a satin inner highlight. And I say that because you guys probably cannot see it, but in person, and I'm 50 and I've always had extra skin, like even in my kid pictures, I've always had this patch of skin up here. So that's not because my eyes are drooping or whatever this has always been here 
but as I've gotten older, I've noticed I do have, because I'm getting lines, I, I, of course you can see the ones underneath my eyes, but even like in this area here, there's additional lines. And I noticed when I was putting shadow on, because they are matte, it tends to accentuate the lines in my inner corner area. Whereas if I use um, a metallic or a shimmer for my inner corner, it hides the lines because the light bounces off the reflectiveness of that shade of the satin or the sheen or the metallic um, eyeshadow color. And so that's the only thing I'm kind of missing, but I can just dip into another palette for that. And it's not really that big of a deal. And maybe you can see it, maybe not, I don't know. I can see it now looking at it, but I don't know if you guys can see it. Like right, right along here, it looks like it, the, it looks like the color may have been skipping, but it wasn't. It's just the lines on my lid that appear to be accentuated due to using a light colored matte shadow. So anyway, you've heard my thoughts throughout the video and I thank you for watching them and I apologize if they were boring. <laughs> but again, I am glad that I used the palette in the way that I did because I wanted to use every shadow and the easiest way to do that was to just go by row and to show you guys what I did. So this is Natasha Denona Safari palette. I forgot to add I think in all of the videos I did in this one long video to go ahead and subscribe click like um, click the notification bell also for those of you who waited until it was on sale like I did to buy it <laughs> let me know what you think about it for 65 hmm, no for $64.50 I am glad that I have it However, I would have been disappointed if I had paid $129 for it, especially already having the Biba palette. And I did mention that um, yes, in yesterday's video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like it for the $64.50? But you wouldn't have liked it for the $129? <laughs> or do you just not like it at all? Like, what are your thoughts on this palette? Are you glad that you have it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And also, if you've done looks with this palette, feel free to leave your links below for me to see the looks that you did. And let's discuss. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Another look with the Natasha Denona Safari palette. And this is actually seven shades <laughs> on my lid. I'm thinking this is as good as it's going to get. I do like the look. Um, I kept trying to deepen the colors. It w wasn't really working, which is why I kept putting on more and more different colors. So what I, <laughs> what I did today was I put this here in the crease and slightly above the crease. I put this directly in the crease. This has a brow bone highlight. And then I ended up going over it with this because this is really light on me, like super light powdery light. I put this is that the right one yeah this on the first half of my lid this on the second half of my lid and I put this um, just above these two to blend them out a little bit and then I ended up going over top of that with this shade here so this one here is way up here this one here is you can probably tell because it looks it actually does look brown <laughs> and this is the look. I do like it. I don't know what else to say. Because <laughs> I've said my thoughts with the other looks that I did. I do like the looks for the most part that I've done with it. So I will continue to use it. Is it my favorite Natasha Denona palette? And no, because I'm spoiled by Biba. And I know I said that in a couple of these other little clips. Um, but yeah. So if you are just wanting this palette... Find it on sale half off. Even though sixty-four fifty is still a lot for a palette, it's still a lot better than one hundred and twenty-nine for a palette. And you know we get less shadows, you know, for in that price point than this. You know, Urban Decay their naked palettes are like fifty-four bucks. So this for sixty-four dollars and fifty cents to me is not a bad price at all. And so I kind of look at it that way. 
in comparison to even Mac eyeshadow is what like nine ten bucks and you have I can't even count 15 shades in here <laughs> and so sixty four dollars and fifty cents for 15 shades to me is not a bad deal even at 129 for Biba palette which I did purchase um during um Sephora Rogue sale so I got 20 percent off <laughs> Even for that price, it still comes out to like $10 a shadow, which to me is not horrible if the shadow is good quality. I don't know if I'm going to do another look tomorrow or not. I'm thinking not, but I didn't think I was going to do one today either. And Wednesday, I will be going back home to Delaware. I don't know if I said it. I'm in Cape Charles, Virginia. Yay! Look at that troll. The troll bags. So no foundation at all since I've been here because going to the beach is like, why put it on? And also, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. And you will see me. Um, the next video you see me in will be back in my own habitat. And I promise I'll have on face paint. Thumbs up for that for less of a troll and subscribe comment let me know your thoughts on this palette thanks guys hey guys i'm doing this because this eye is tearing horribly so that just i went on youtube last night and this looks crazy too i went on youtube last night and was looking up videos with um looks from the safari palette so i'm like let me just try some other looks besides the ones that i have done and I was looking at videos from people who are um, like in the tan golden undertone complexion range. And so this is one of the looks I saw. And this, these shades are Rhino, Fata, Morgana, and Stone. And underneath the lower lash line is Thorn. And over top of Thorn is Fata Morgana, which the blue didn't even show up over top of the brown. The brown is Thorn and the Fata Morgana is the bluish sh shade. I'm finding that when I do the lid colors first, they show up more so than if I do the crease colors first. And so I did do the Fata Morgana first, and I really like that shade. It shows up really well on me. And these are the kind of looks I like. I like darker tones. I like the richer tones, the more saturated tones. And so this I really, really like. These over here <laughs> is like the Maasai desert date um and i forget what else but i'll list it somewhere too and i think that's as good as it's going to get minus my eye tearing but as far as how the colors show up on my skin tone i think it's always just going to be like this neutral type whatever um type look so i'll keep playing around with it thank you for enjoying these videos and for the trollness yeah because mm -hmm.